Hi, I'm Josh, and this is the Science Classroom. In this video, we're going to talk about solubility and concentration. Dissolving is a common and familiar process. Put something like sugar into water, give it a stir, and it dissolves. But what actually happens when something dissolves in water? In this video, we will learn first how the dissolving process works. Then, we'll learn how scientists measure concentration when something is dissolved. Next, we'll learn how to calculate the amount of solute based on the concentration. We're probably most familiar with solids dissolving into liquids, so we will focus on that process as we describe dissolving. In this case, the solid, like table salt, is called the solute, and the solute dissolves into the solvent, which in this case is water. Together, the solute and the solvent become the solution. For a substance to be able to dissolve into a liquid, they have to have the same polarity. To put it simply, when we zoom down to the molecular level, we'll notice that some substances are polar and some are nonpolar. Polar substances have charges, plus and minus. They are called polar because the separated positive and negative charges make up opposite sides of poles. Like north and south pole have opposite directions, north and south. The polar molecule has opposite charges, positive and negative. We won't get into where these charges come from in this video, but for more information on molecular polarity, watch the video linked in the description. For now, just know that water is a very polar molecule. Most people are familiar with the chemical formula for water, H2O. It has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And this is what the water molecule looks like. The two hydrogen atoms have positive charges, and the oxygen atom has a negative charge. It's polar. So other polar substances, substances with charges, can dissolve into water, like salt or sugar. But nonpolar substances, substances without charges, cannot dissolve, like oil. So let's zoom in and see what actually happens when something dissolves. We'll look at regular old table salt for this example. Table salt has the chemical formula NaCl. It is called an ionic compound because the compound is formed of ions. Ions are charged atoms. The sodium ion is a sodium atom, the symbol Na from the periodic table, with a positive charge. And the chloride ion is a chlorine atom, the symbol Cl from the periodic table, with a negative charge. These opposite charges attract and the ions stick together, and they form a lattice like this. When placed in water, however, the ions separate from each other and attract to the water molecules. The ions like sticking to the water molecules because there are so many of those water molecules, they completely surround the ion and stabilize that charge. This is the dissolving process, when individual particles of the substance separate and get surrounded by water molecules. Now the particles are too small to see, and that's why a dissolved substance is invisible. They're still there, now they're just too small and spread out. A measurement that compares the amount of solute to solution is called concentration. The more concentrated a solution, the more solute particles that are dissolved. There's even a maximum amount of a given solute that can dissolve into a solution. When a solution reaches the maximum allowed dissolved solute, the solution is saturated. An unsaturated solution means there's still room for more solute. Scientists have many different ways to measure concentration. There's molarity, mole fraction, percent solution, just to name a few. Probably the most common unit of concentration for chemists, though, is called molarity or molar concentration. In this method of concentration, a chemist compares the amount of solute in the unit of moles to the amount of total solution in the unit of liters. The symbol capital M represents molarity. And we calculate the molarity of a solution with this equation. Molarity equals moles of solute divided by liters of solution. Let's see how to use this calculation with this example. A solution of table salt, NaCl, contains 2.37 moles of NaCl in 485 milliliters of solution. What's the molar concentration of the solution? Well, we know that molar concentration is moles of solute over liters of solution. So before I start solving this problem, I'm going to organize the given data. So first I need moles of solute. Do I have that? Yeah, NaCl is the solute, and it's given in the problem that there are 2.37 moles. So I'll write that down. Next, I need liters of solution. Do I have that? Not exactly. I know the milliliters of solution. 
and I can convert that pretty easily into liters. I'll use dimensional analysis to convert 485 milliliters times the conversion factor that compares milliliters to liters, which is one liter over 1,000 milliliters. So really I'm just taking 485 and dividing it by 1,000 to get 0.485 liters of solution. All right, now I can put these numbers into the equation and plug it into my calculator to get 4.89 molar solution. We can also use this equation to find the amount of solute that's dissolved in a solution. Here, let's look at this question. How many grams of sodium chloride are in 0.5 liters of a 4.89 molar solution? Essentially, this is a mole conversion problem. And when I do mole conversions, I like to use a tool called a mole map. There's a PDF of a mole map linked in the description of this video. A mole map shows the pathway through conversion factors to get from one unit to another unit. As long as you know where you are starting and where you want to end up, it's pretty easy to perform the conversion. So we are starting with a solution. So we are here, volume of solution. So what is the volume of solution? Well, that's the liters right here, 0.5 liters. So we want to get from volume of solution all the way over here to grams. To get to grams, we have to go through the mole. The mole is the SI unit for the amount of something, and all of these units are connected by that unit. So we are first gonna convert to moles, and then we'll convert to mass. So we take our given 0.5 liters, and we'll multiply it by the conversion factor of concentration, moles over liters. That was given to us in the problem as well. Now remember that the capital M here, that means moles of solute over liters of solution. So I can write this number, 4.89, as 4.89 moles over one liter. That means the same thing as 4.89 capital M. See that the so, liters will cancel, bringing me to the center of the mole map, the mole. Now I can go to mass. The conversion factor here is X grams over one mole, where the X is the molar mass of the substance, in this case, the solute NaCl. To get the molar mass, I just have to look at a periodic table and add up the two elements here sodium and chloride. Sodium has a molar mass of 23 and chloride has a molar mass of 35.5. Add them together and I get 58.5. That's what I'll put in for the X. Okay, everything's set up. Let's plug this into our calculator and see what we get. 0.5 liters times 4.89 times 58.5 and we get 143 grams of sodium chloride. That's how much sodium chloride is in 0.5 liters of a 4.89 molar solution. So in this video, we learned how dissolving works, what concentration is, and how to calculate mass of solute given the concentration and volume of a solution. Thanks for watching.